Hey everyone, we're here today with another video. In this video we're going to do something a bit different, mainly because I want to share with you 5 tips I wish I knew when I started working with MacGyver. Not only will we see some tips to make our life easier, but also to save us a bit of time. So let's get started. Number 5 I mean, I'm pretty sure you already know what it is, and it's very obvious. Sure, it's this greenish tutorial bar. I mean, don't get me wrong, this tutorial is perfect for someone starting up with AppGyver. You can learn everything about the basics of logic, variables, data and formulas, but also to get an idea behind the ideology of AppGyver. But when you finish it, it's time to go. So the way to do it is come here in the community tab and check this checkmark. Also, it's important to keep this tab in your mind because, as you can see, we have links to all the major pages that an AppGyver user needs. Number 4 In number 4, we're coming back to a previous video about connecting an API for phone number validation. If you're interested, you can check this video out, I will link it down below. So, one tip we can take from that video has to do with the data connector here in the Composer. So let me show you. After connecting the API, in any case, what we want to do is import data to our app. So let's say we want to validate the response of the API. The way to do that would be to use an if condition and check some of the uh, values returned from the API, which we can find in the output. But as you can see, the output doesn't have any value from the API. The way to correct that would be to let the composer know what to expect as a response from this API. To do that, we have to go in data and the steps we need to take are first create a test query and then set the schema based on the response we get from the API. So pressing this button. You can see the response has populated automatically and the schema is set. So if we go again to try and validate some parameter of the response, you can see that in the output we have mapped the response from the API. So, whenever you're using an API, remember to set the schema from the response. Number three. This one will be especially useful if you're a beginner. Here we have a page variable called image, and as an initial value, we have an image URL. As you can see, the type of the value is text. Now, let's try to bind this page variable with this image. If we try to do it this way, you might have guessed that we won't be able to because the page variable is incompatible with the, with the component we want to bind it. But if you know that it makes sense to bind those two together, the way to do it is using a formula and binding it from here. As you can see, we have some error messages, but they're yellow, and so we can save the formula. If we give it a try, you can see that the image shows perfectly. Of course, the right way to do that would be to come in the page variable, which is typed from text to image URL. Then, if we try to connect it once again, via the data and variables, you can see that we can do it fine. Number two. In number two, I wanted to tell you something about the preview app. First of all, you can open the preview portal from here and have access to the app on the web, but also if you have the mobile version of the preview, 
you can test your app on your mobile. The thing to keep in mind is that if you're using Firebase and you have connected it with your app from here, be sure that the type of app you have configured from here matches the type of preview you want to use. Meaning that if you have only connected in web app, when you go to test your app on the mobile preview, some features might not work, like authentication. So the tip here is that even if you're only making application for mobile, you can also configure for web application in this connector. So you will be able to test your app easier from the web preview. Of course, not uh, all the components work both on mobile and on web, but this tip can help you test your app even if you don't have direct access to a mobile. Number one. In this place, we have a very simple, but yet helpful tip to help you save time. Let's say that we want to add a new set page variable logic between those two logics. One way to do that is deleting this connection and then creating two new ones. Of course, there is an easier way to do that. And that's simply dragging it across the ready-made connection. And as you can see, the new logic connects itself automatically. So guys, these were the five tips I wish I knew when I started working with AppGyver. I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, hit the like button and consider subscribing for future ones. Thanks for watching.